I right, wanted to make a quick video on my process uh, about how I go about cleaning up my sculpts. So after I, you know, concept this guy out, for example, this is a torso for the uh, Gordon Freeman that I'm making. Um, then how how do I take these shapes and make, you know, clean parts out of them? So um, I'm sure there's more than one way to do this. And again, this might not be something that you're interested in, but just wanted to show my approach to this very simple um, I use the topology um, brush for this process and what I do first is I basically trace the the topology of the of the piece that I want to work on so let's say for example if we wanted to do this middle part then I will start tracing and again the topology brush works with symmetry so that works very well so you start uh, sketching out your lines and your topology um, so you start laying down the lines and then if you go across them then you will start making polygons for it if you hold alt and swipe outside of it then you'll clean those uh, extra edges that you might see outside so I just quickly go um, through the process and see if I can make this in the middle all right very good um, and essentially go ahead and create the topology for it. If you get something like that, that just means that edges are not connecting. So you can just trace it one more time and you can just go outside of the line. That's not a problem. Now, once you see that it's orange, then that means that they are connected. And let's say for example, you wanted to add a uh, just another edge right here in the middle. Just trace it and that's that. Clean it up. And it doesn't have to be, you know, the most perfect lines or the most perfect topology right now. Uh, we just want to lay something down quick that we can use for um, and then move around to get the shape that we want. So there's something not connecting here. Let's stretch this one out. There you go. Probably want to put another one here. And what's going on here? Let's just redo this all the way through. Grab this one, touch the edge. Why is it not working now? Of course. Now that I'm trying to show it, it's not going to work. All right. Let's do this one more time. Right through the middle. There you go. All right. So again, you see that the line right here is not even at all. If you do a better job than me at that, then by all means do that. Um, but it's not a big deal breaker. You can add another line right there in the middle. And I'll tell you what, let's take it a little bit further. We're gonna add this little lip down here. Very good. All right, and we'll go around. All right, so super dirty, super quick, nothing super fancy, it's just basic. All right, so now once you have that, now the way that the topology brush works is depending on the size of your brush. Uh, once you're finished tracing your, uh, your topology, if you hold Alt and click on the mesh, then what it will do is it will create um, just out of those lines, it will actually create topology that you can use. Now this is double sided so you'll get like a, you know something with full thickness and if we go back to it again you increase the size of the brush then the thicker it is so you can use that to your advantage most of the time what I do um, is I will basically use a very low brush size so I don't get a very thick um, piece of geometry and what I'll do is once I have it like this, where it's already masked out of the other mesh, then I'll go ahead and split by mass points. Now I have this piece of geometry that I can work with. Now, here's the cool thing. I can go back and have the sculpt in the back as reference so that I can start moving this piece right here and clean it up a little bit. So. The way that I do this is I will increase all the edges just to make sure 
that I don't have any crease edges for now because I do use them once in a while. Then I will just grab the top poly group and then I will just delete the rest of them. This makes it easy for you to manipulate the, the points with the move tool. So this is where I was saying that is not super you know, important that you make those clean lines because you can then come in with the move tool and then start adjusting these points where you want them to be. So let's say if we do I don't know, something like this for now, we might need another edge right here to support this. So you start putting them where you want them or where they should be. Um, and, and this is a process that you can basically do on pretty much any program. Uh, you can use quad draw on uh, Maya as well. I just like the way that I have the move uh, brush here and that I can just, you know, move these points around without too big of a hassle. Um, so that, that just works for me. So that doesn't mean you cannot do it any, anywhere else. It's just, you don't have to lift ZBrush, you're here and you can do all these changes on the fly and, uh, and go from there. So now when you have something like this, then you want to start refining it. Um, if you need to add more edges, then by all means do that uh, for support. Start pulling these things out. And once you have something that you think is pretty clean, let's say if I was be like, all right, well this is this is good enough for me. I don't I don't need to fiddle with this anymore. Um, then what you'll do is then you or, or this is what I the process that I take after this part right here. I go to geometry. I go to edge loops and then panel loops right here. Make sure that you don't have any thickness, uh, elevation, just put it down to zero. No polish, we don't want to polish it yet. And on the panel loop count, just go down to, to one. It makes it easier to handle that way. So that once you hit panel loops, then now you have this uh, piece right here that you can work with. And again, this can be... You know, you can use this with multiple poly groups and it will just basically give thickness to both of them. In this case, it's just one. So you can play around with these settings to get either a thicker uh, panel or a smaller one. In this case, we're just going to leave it like this. So you can start seeing how this, how you might be able to use this to your advantage. So let's say after you come to this point, say this is your beautiful model. You already want to use it. You can always test it with uh, dynamic uh, subdivision here to see how it's looking. And at this point, this is when you want to start, you know, going to C modeler and start adding some bevels and, uh, and some support loops the same way that you would basically do um, box modeling. So we can do that pretty quick just to show how this might look. And again, you can always go back to dynamic and start checking it and see how how that's looking for you. So a lot of, you know, different ways to do this process that I'm doing right now. But at least for me, this is the one that I that I like the best. It's um, it's given me the best results so far. So pretty much all my models, I make them like this and you can always go in here and start moving it around so that you can get cleaner uh, lines and results. So the lower the count of edges and verts that you have, the easier it is to manipulate this, of course. That's why you wanna, as with box modeling, you wanna keep it fairly low at the beginning. Um, let's say, you know, you're happy with this and, and where it's going. The advantages of this is that you can use this as a starting point for your low poly as well so you can start removing those support edges um, you can use it you know with dynamic submission and the live boolean to add you know holes for the screws and uh, and different things let's say if you want to add let's go back actually let's bring that back let's say you want to add an edge that goes across to 
fake some paneling you can do so um, add an edge right there and then we're gonna Q mesh by the poly loop so after that you add a couple more support loops boom you have a line there that is super clean super crisp and uh, and you can use very quickly for your high poly and use that low mesh for your to start your low poly so um that's pretty much it i mean there's not much else to it just wanted to quickly go through it and, and show the process that i take um for this part of the of the modeling process uh, well i hope you've enjoyed it and uh, i'll see you in the next one